Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. So today, well, we're celebrating, ladies and gentlemen, because it is exactly 22 years to the day since the second Pokemon TCG expansion, Jungle, was released in Japan. March the 5th, 1997 was the day that that came out over in Japan. So I figured, you know what? Since this is a rather special day, we should go and have a little bit of a look at the very best cards from the Jungle expansion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing you the top five cards from Jungle. Now, Jungle was a very, very weird set. Firstly, it literally had one trainer card. It had Pokeball. That was it. It didn't have any other trainer cards. Secondly, it had 64 cards, but it didn't really have 64 cards. In Japan, it had 64 cards. When it made it out over to Europe, US, etc., the Wizards of the Coast, who were making the game back then, went, oh, that's not quite enough cards. So they reprinted all of the hollows as non-hollow rares, so our 48 card set turned into a 64 card set. So with that in mind, let's start off with a couple of honourable mentions, and let's start off talking about Rapidash. Now, Rapidash in and of itself, not a particularly amazing card, if I'm honest with you. But it had two things that were going for it, which was rather important. First of all, it had Free Retreat. Free Retreat is very, very nice. Secondly, it hit Weakness on Cyber. And that's basically it. Cypher was a very, very good card. It was part of that Haymaker deck that was absolutely crushing back in the base set format. And this allowed you to hit for weakness. You could use double colorless energy. And then you would do 20 damage, 40 on a heads. And if you could hit a heads here, then you would actually be getting a one hit KO on Cypher for just a single energy attachment. Along with the retreat cost of zero, that was all right. We've also got to give a quick shout out to Wigglytuff here, who did see a bit of play and did see a bit of love, but was never quite good enough. The fact that it was weak to Hitmonchan, the other amazing card in the base set, didn't help. But what did help was free energy, 10 damage, plus 10 more for each of your bench Pokemon. With a full bench, that's 60 damage. And okay, that is 10 damage short of cards like Hitmonchan and Cypher, but plus power was a big deal back then. Pretty much every deck played multiple plus power. So it really wasn't a difficult thing to KO them. The biggest problem with Wigglytuff was that we had all those energy removal cards and super energy removal cards. And this wasn't a single energy attachment, which if you played against a heavy energy removal deck could be a problem. So in at number five, we've got Dodrio. Now, Dodrio also has free retreat, which is very, very nice. But more than that, it's got a Pokemon power, which was a precursor to poker power, which was a precursor to abilities, which gave all of your Pokemon one less energy in their retreat cost, which is quite cool. It just helped you retreat your Pokemon that little bit more easily. Now, it was weak to Electabuzz, which was the other really good Pokemon from the base set. But it didn't really matter because you resisted Hitmonchan. So you could kind of play around a little bit. Yes, against Electabuzz, you're being hit for weakness. But against Hitmonchan, you're resisting. And even if you're just sitting on the bench, you're reducing the retreat cost of your Pokemon. Now, honestly, the attack wasn't great. We got the free energy, which as we mentioned with Wigglytuff is far from ideal. 10 damage plus 10 more for each damage counter on Dodrio. But the resistance to Hitmonchan, the free retreat, and the aiding your retreat, I mean, literally, the Pokemon powers called Retreat Aid, of your other Pokemon, makes me like it enough to pop it in at number 5. In at number 4, we have another colorless Pokemon. It's Lickitung. Lickitung has got high HP. Back in the base set, jungle era 90 hp on a basic was big wasn't quite chancy big but it was still pretty gosh darn big now the weakness to hitmonchan not ideal 
Put one colorless energy, 10 damage, flip a coin, if heads, paralysis. And you know what? That's pretty good. Again, back in this era, 10 damage meant a lot more than 10 damage means nowadays. Plus, the coin flip paralysis meant that you could just buy yourself some turns here. And, of course, you could use stuff like Scoop Up here to pick up your Lickitung. And it only had one energy on, so yeah, you had to discard the energy, but it was only one, so it really wasn't a big deal. You pick up your Lickitung. And you're probably not getting one hit KO'd. So you're going to have time to pick it up. So if you're not getting one hit KO'd, and we've got cars that can pick it up easily, and it's paralyzing every other turn, you're going to be able to waste a bit of time with Lickitung. And I mean that in the best way possible. In at number three, we've got another colorless Pokemon. It's Kangaskhan, another basic Pokemon, and another Pokemon that's got 90 HP. Now, once again, we got the weakness to Hitmonchan that really can be a bad thing. Hitmonchan was great back in the day. Then again, with a single energy, Hitmonchan would only do 40 with the weakness, and plus power was applied after weakness. So if you played a plus power, it would only actually do 10 more, not 20 more, if you were weak. So it still took a little bit for Hitmonchan to take down Kangaskhan until they got free energy on, in which case, yowza. One colorless energy, draw a card. It's not bad. I mean, look, in a format where we've got stuff like Bill and Professor Oak, and they're all trainer cards that can be played as often as you like, what would be item cards nowadays? Maybe drawing a card isn't that great, but it was an option. But then four energy, bearing in mind you had double colorless, Flip four coins, and you do 20 damage for each head that you flip. Yeah, this could add up pretty gosh darn quickly. Yes, it was flippy, and yes, it was unreliable. But if we ignore the flippiness and the unreliability, we're left with a really nice, big, bulky card that can either draw or do a bunch of damage. Now, one and two, you could absolutely flip-flop, and I won't be mad, but I feel good about my listing here. In at number two, a card that many of you thought would probably be number one, Cypher. A really good card. So good, in fact, that Rapidash got an honorable mention because it hits it for weakness. And again, we got free retreat, like a bunch of Pokemon on this list. But really, it just fits into that Haymaker deck with Hitmonchan and Electabuzz. And I think the reason I'm putting this at number two is because you didn't need to have Cypher in the deck. The deck worked with just Hitmonchan and Electabuzz. Now, the ideal situation here is one Grass Energy, you do Sword Stance. And then the next turn, you attach a Double Colorless Energy and your Slash does 60. Now, again, Energy Removal was a problem. And back in this format, with the prevalence of all of these cards like Energy Removal and Super Energy Removal, any Pokemon that had an attack cost of more than one energy, except maybe stuff like Blastoise who could just attach as many as they liked, really was a little bit of an issue because it made those Pokemon vulnerable. But it hits a different weakness to Electabuzz and Hitmonchan, that's nice. It's got a resistance to opposing Hitmonchan, that's nice. It's got free retreat, and at the end of the day, this is still a good pair of attacks. But I dropped it down to number two because you didn't need it in Haymaker. Although it was a very good card in Haymaker. In at number one, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime, probably my least favorite Pokemon in the whole of the original 151 in Gen 1. But the card from Jungle was nuts. The Pokemon power Invisible Wall, whenever an attack does 30 or more damage to Mr. Mime, prevent that damage. Now, it didn't get used if you were affected by a special condition. That was a feature of the Pokemon TCG a little while ago. But as long as you weren't affected by a special condition, you just didn't get one hit KO'd. You couldn't get one hit KO'd. Because if your opponent does 30 or more, it gets stopped. So the best they can do is do 20 damage now, 20 damage next turn. But you can use something like Scoop Up to, to pick it up and save it. Or there was a great little combo where you would play Alakazam, admittedly a stage two, but you could get it out. The format was a bit slower in terms of big one hit KOs just did not happen that often. And then Alakazam would move your damage off 
and you'd have Chansey on the bench, so Mr. Mime would take maximum 20 damage. If your opponent tried to do more than that, it wouldn't work. And if they did 10 or 20 damage, you would just use Alakazam to move it onto a Chansey, and then when Chansey had enough damage on, you just use something like a scoop up and get rid of it. Or you would use a Pokemon Center. Now, Pokemon Center was basically like a forced max potion on all of your Pokemon. You removed all damage counters from all of your Pokemon, but then you discarded all the energy. But of course, you, you've got Alakazam. So you can make sure that all the damage is only on Chansey. So then you don't have to lose the rest of your energy. It's really good. And that's why I put Mr. Mime as the best card in jungle. I love the fact, I adore the fact, that you basically said, yeah, you just can't one-hit KO me. And don't worry, because when you don't one-hit KO me, I'm just going to heal up, and you're not going to get a KO. And that's going to be kind of funny. Obviously, Gust of Wind was a thing back then, so you could just ignore Mr. Mime and take out bench Pokemon. And Item Finder was a thing back then, which would allow you to actually reuse that. But that was the only way around Mr. Mime. If you couldn't take out the bench Pokemon, you couldn't take out anything. And that was kind of fun. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my top five cards from Jungle. Jungle is 22 years old today. I'm excited. And frankly, I would like to continue my celebrations by reading about all of your memories and experiences of the Jungle set. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but please do remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wazzy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where well we talk about games that don't have pokemon in but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio